And there's your cue. All right, you guys, we're alive with episode 19 with the bearded one, Brian Rodman. But wait, we've got an intro as soon as I find it. There you go. Rich. Asian. It ain't easy being whizzy. You right. should not make fun of asthmatics, <laughs> Meredith. That is not cool. Uh, no, by all means, make fun of asthmatics. It is fantastic. <laughs> I even have my, I have my fun mug. My right lungs there. are trying to kill me. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I love the art on the nebulizer. Uh, Brian Rodman, first, before we get into your campaign, we love to talk about the creative journey, but we want to talk about you. What you're doing, the bearded one has joined yeah. us today on Region. Uh, <laughs> Brian, you've got a lot of stuff going on, man. Yeah. I, I don't know how you're juggling it all because I am trying to juggle it all. And I decided, man, I'm going to take a nap today. So <laughs> what <laughs> you know, are you funny. doing? Yeah. Uh, I was going to say last night I was I did the same thing. I was like, I should work on all the things that I'm doing. And instead, I'm just going to play video games for the first time in a year. <laughs> so it was like whatever i'm doing this oh because you know you have uh you know art you've got an active campaign you've got a podcast going you've got life stuff going on so yeah just video games yeah why not makes sense you know? however it was the first time in a very long time it was funny uh after dinner uh, i was like i'm gonna go work and that didn't happen because I came in and I saw that my game was still up on my laptop. And I was like, no, I'm just doing that. <laughs> so, Sometimes you need that brain break, right? Yeah, yeah. And I've been very productive today. So there we go. Yeah. Awesome. So, I mean, we kind of gave a little taste of what you do, but mm -hmm. I want to talk about young Brian, the youth who decided the one beard. day. Before the beard. Before the beard. <laughs> before the beard. Oh. Uh, what was that creative journey like? I mean, why comic books? Why the podcast? Why art? When, at what point did you go, yeah, that's the thing I want to do? Mm -hmm. Well, um, it's actually, it, it does kind of all tie back to asthma. Um, so mm -hmm. I've had asthma, chronic asthma my whole life. Um, and when I was, I was diagnosed when I was two. Uh, and, and fun fact, I was in the top 5% of the worst cases of childhood asthma in my city. Wow. Um, so, yeah. So with that, a uh, lot of time just kind of sick inside, not able to really go outside very much. And what my parents did to kind of distract me from from that not so great time was um, comics, cartoons, you know, sat me in front of a TV with my, hooked up to my machine and, you know, I, I would draw um a anyway, sketch pad pencil i would draw what i saw like in cartoons what i saw in the comics and make up my own stories and really that time really just kind of developed my imagination and i fell in love with the comic book medium um and uh and of course animation as well and and uh it really it kind of just sparked that drive in me from a very early age so you know flat uh fast forward you know i don't know, 10 years or something and you know graduating high school and and um i was actually at, at that time deciding to go into vocational ministry be a youth pastor or a counselor or something like that mm -hmm. and um and the whole time that i was at uh seminary <laughs> uh you can even see like in some of my old notes like in the margins and stuff like i'm learning you know theology and all this stuff and and um I had, you know, my previous series that I also, the ongoing series I have going on called Memoirs of an Angel, that was in the back of my mind. And mm -hmm. um, so I was just kind of really scribbling down notes and, and, and you know, and 
and through that, I really decided I was like, you know, after, you know, I, I thought at the time, maybe while I was doing vocational ministry, I would also be a comic book creator. I didn't really know what that looked like. Um, and then I, I, my life took me a different direction. And, uh, you know, I, I met my wife and <laughs> um there goes seminary. Well, no, it was, seminary was already out uh, by that time, and and uh, I, I met my wife, and we, uh, <laughs> we, you know, we got married. And one day, I, I just kept talking to her about memoirs of the talking to her about that, and making comics. And uh, and finally, one day, you know, she she was like, "Okay, are you gonna? Are we? We're either gonna do this, or you're gonna shut up about it." Um, and, and that was what, that was really like, you know, the, the, the final nail, um, that was driven. And I was like, okay, let's, let's do it. Because I, up to that point was not a very like business minded person. I, didn't, I wanted to do comics. I had no idea how, and I didn't even know how to figure out how to do it. So I was just like, this would be great one day to do. And I like had sketches and notes and all this stuff. I had no direction on how to actually get that started. And, uh, <laughs> an accountant and an awesome businesswoman and she kind of took those ideas and, and these dreams that I had been, you know, thinking of my whole life and we actually did something with it. So now I've learned so much from her as far as that's concerned and and uh, you know, we've now this is our fifth very successful Kickstarter and um, we're having a blast doing this stuff. So yeah, that's kind of the quick summary. Uh, so it started off with Sickly Brian, you know, not able to do anything, so Started jumping into comic books, and uh, yeah, throughout the years, that just never really left me. And then finally, mm -hmm. uh, I met a I met a wonderful woman who you know whipped me into shape and made me do it. <laughs> so yeah, so that's well, how we're here. it's kind of like um, you know to kind of be a little crude, but it was almost uh, from the sense of it a uh, shut or get off the pot kind of moment, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to, to the creative process, and I've talked to movie directors and writers, comic book creators, uh, musicians, and things like that, and there was that moment where they were like, well, is this a hobby? Right. Or is this going to be something I want to do and try and make something of as a career, you know, and support yeah. my family doing it? And that's really kind of a scary jump. Uh, was it yeah. scary for you? Um, It was kind of scary i mean it, it is funny like you know we talk about all the things that i'm juggling i also have a day job uh because i have to have health insurance uh good and mm -hmm. my day job has great health insurance um and they're super supportive with this uh business as well like they they come to shows they buy books they do you know they, they give me all the time off i need and and um it, they're great uh but it was still a scary jump because there was so much more i mean especially knowing essentially i'm working two full-time jobs you know mm -hmm. uh you know monday through friday during the day i do you know work in a tech shop for a security equipment company programming cameras and things like that and then at, by night i'm you know comic book creator and podcaster and and do that you know at nights on the weekend so there's still a ton of um, you know, financially, it wasn't really a super scary jump, but you know, as far as my social life was concerned and, and, mm -hmm. you know, it was, a, it was an adjustment. Um, you know, there, there are people that I don't see very much anymore. Um, there are things I can't just go do if I feel like it, like I have responsibilities now, you know, people are, are paying for what I'm doing and that is serious. And so I need to take that seriously and put the work in. So yeah, that part was a little like, okay, this is a huge commitment and am I really going to do this? And if I am, I have to be a hundred percent. I can't just flake out, you know, after I draw five pages, like this has got to be an actual commitment. And so that was a little scary, but I was so passionate about it. The fear washed away pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about, if you don't mind, you know, yeah. the, the kid who was kind of hooked to the machines with, the, with mm -hmm. asthma and not being able to breathe and things like that. Uh, coping mechanisms, you said things like, uh, you know, you would draw and sit in front of the TV and stuff like that. What were some of the, 
for for those who don't understand asthma, because I do have friends in asthma. So at the very beginning, you know, when I'm like, <laughs> you know, it, it's like it's for right. the nebulizer, you guys. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but I mean, it's true. I've had friends who who just all of a sudden they turned very pale, kind of bluish and they couldn't breathe. And it's just yeah. like, what can I do? Yeah. You know, what can people do and what do you do to kind of get through that, especially when you were young? Yeah. Um, th it was, it was actually, I, I have, I've been at the same, uh, uh, lung specialist since I was two as well. So I, I've, I've had the same doctors. They, they're fantastic. When I was a little kid, the, one of the, alongside the actual like medication side of it, they also really focused on the psychological side of it mm -hmm. as well. So it was okay. When you have an asthma attack, instead of panicking, because that's just going to make everything worse think about a happy place think about things that are going to like calm you down so you can focus and you know breathe and focus and if you're alone you can put your nebulizer together uh nebulizer machine together you know well and quickly um and so that was i mean as far as during an attack that's been the most helpful thing from a very young age that was what my doctors had me do and and um really encouraged you know just essentially the don't panic was, mm -hmm. was huge. And because it really, I mean, during an asthma attack and, and that's the thing, like a lot of people think, you know, of asthma, like, Oh, well you have an attack and then, you know, you, you take your inhaler and, and you're fine. And mm -hmm. sometimes that's the case. Other times, uh, you know, you can, it, it can just be secular, secular. So, um, you know, you, I can have an asthma attack and depending on the severity of it, it can knock me out for a week or two. I mean, I actually just had that uh, happen to me a couple weeks ago. Ironically, it happened when I launched the nebulizer, which was dumb. That wasn't stress <laughs> at all. No, not at all. No. Uh, actually, it wasn't stress. It was outside. This is the time of the year where I have to stay inside. And I broke that rule uh, the night that we launched. I was like, I'm going to treat myself because my wife got me. Um, a really cool uh, projector outside and a screen and everything. So I watched Castlevania season uh, four. Uh, it was, Oh, it's so good. I watched Castlevania season four outside and uh, I paid the price, <laughs> but it was, it was worth it to see that up on the big screen. But, um, but anyway, yeah, that so that kind of, because of all the wonderful pollen and grossness that's outside uh, this time of year, it just kind of, harassed my lungs for a good long while and uh and i'm on like i'm on like the heavy duty meds like i take a shot every two months and all this crazy stuff so i got my shot last week so now i'm good for another two months so yeah. we're good but yeah but, um, it, it's great because you know like as adults it's like yeah it's okay i i can handle it no <laughs> yeah yeah so you know as a kid you know that was that's just you know missed a lot of school um i was but my personality i was able to so really, I'm still really social. I'm a social guy. So I was over, able to overcome that pretty easily. Uh, I wasn't, you know, depressed sitting at home alone all the time. But um, but yeah, during those times, it it sucked. I mean, I can tell you, I the hardest part was Halloween. Because when I was a kid, fall was the worst time of year. And summer was actually um, oh. my best time of the year. Now as an adult, it's flipped, which is mm -hmm. weird. But uh, it's just weird how bodies change. But when I was a kid, I would all, you know, half the, half the time I was sick on Halloween. So all my friends would go out trick or treating and I was like sitting at the door. Like, <laughs> Although I got a ton of candy. So there was that, you know, <laughs> my parents See, if like, only you had the nebulizer suit while walking around, right? right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh man. Which we'll get into that a little bit later. They, it, there's, there's a funny story to how, how this comic actually became nice. a thing. Nice. Yeah. Now, um, so now you mentioned memoirs of an angel. Yeah. You want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. We can talk about that. Yeah. Um, that's, that's going to be, so the nebulizer, what I've started doing is Mem memoirs of an angel is probably going to cap out about, about 50 issues. Um, you know, it's, it's, that's the thing I've been working on for, oh gosh, so many years, uh, just kind of formulating the story and, and, you know, I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian, and when I when I graduated high school, um, I went to college, or went to community college just for a couple of years to figure out kind of what I wanted to do with my life. And um, there, I was faced with, like, 
you know, someone who wasn't a Christian who knew exactly why they weren't and why Christianity wasn't true. I was like, oh, crap. I had nothing to say in return. Wow. And so, yeah, because, like, I just never really put a whole lot of thought into it. I was just raised that way. And so I was like, oh, this is what I believe. And this is true. And then when someone was like, actually, it's not true. And this is why. And you don't really know how, how to respond answer. to that. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's, a, there's a bit of a, a – it should – you know, put you into like a questioning mode, like, oh, okay, so, so what do I believe and why do I believe it and what is truth and all that stuff. So I went on that journey for a few years and, and wasn't really trying to, to prove, you know, Christianity to myself. It was more so just what is, is this real and what is real about it and so on and so forth. And, and so a lot of that research then led me into um, seminary. And uh, just learning more and more about why I believe what I believe and, 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 you know, what it, you know, it, what was, tr what was like man-made tradition versus what was actually, you know, in the Bible and in the context of the ancient writers and all that stuff. And, and through that process, Memoirs of an Angel became a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my love for comics uh, was really kind of, <laughs> it's funny, like as a storyteller, that was the only real way I knew to like, process what i was ingesting and so it came out as a story and i've always been fascinated with you know horror and supernatural uh stuff and so it came out as a horror fantasy uh it's essentially i tell people it's essentially lord of the rings meets the exorcist so in like that crazy climax of the exorcist if you pull back the curtain of the physical realm that's what memoirs of an angel is nice. um and uh and so, you know, it, it, a lot of the things that I learned and, and studied and still learn and study, uh, you know, I have stopped questioning, uh, you know, as I, you know, work through uh, my faith, it comes out in Memoirs of an Angel. So it's kind of like a a, a a form of worship, a form of like, you know, journaling about my faith just through comic books. Uh, yeah, I was going to say it sounds like journaling. Yeah, yeah, it, it in just a way. comes out that way. Yeah, and and really like, um, you know, and honestly, for me, like I, I hate Christian entertainment. It sucks. It's it's usually you know, <laughs> it generally terrible. does. There, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a few exceptions, but they're yeah. very rare. And 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 I never, I did not want to be like this is the Christian comic. It's not. It's not. It's a mm -hmm. horror fantasy comic that has biblical themes, and that's what I tell people because because it's not family friendly. It's actually for, for mature readers, Dark. there's a lot of gore. There's a lot of, you know, because yeah, I, I say this all the time. Like if someone made a movie of the Bible, it would be NC-17. Like oh, sure. there's some crazy stuff in, mm -hmm. in, in the Bible. And so, yeah, like how it came from that to, you know, this cheesy cookie cutter, you know, family friendly, everything wraps up happy at the beginning. I have no idea because that is not what Christianity is. <laughs> but but for some reason that's a, that's what it is depicted as in in the Christian genre on TV and and uh and you know most Christian entertainment sounds like a, a sermon rather than a story. And I never wanted to do that. And I, I always wanted to, you know, let the story speak for itself, let the characters grow naturally and and you know just like any story, you have themes that pop up throughout and and statements that you make, but, but they're not, they're not preachy. It's, it's told through just storytelling. And, mm -hmm. and so that's what memoirs of an angel became. And that's what it is. And we're, you know, I'm, we just put out our seventh issue uh, this earlier this year, and I'm actually currently writing issues eight and nine, wrapping up the second volume of the series. And, and uh, it's a, it's, it's a blast. I've, it's funny. The first couple issues of memoirs, I had no idea how to make comics. So <laughs> I actually, the first three issues were all black and white at first. And, uh, and then I went back and redid them all digitally and, and threw some color on there. And, and, uh, you know, now I actually know how to make comics and, uh, still learning, but you know, I've oh, got yeah. a pretty good hang of it. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, now they're really coming together and starting to see, I'm starting to see on paper what I saw in my head 10 years ago. Nice. So now on Thursday, we were uh, we were sitting with Michael Watson and he has the hotshot collection right now. Yeah. And his goal was or is 100 issues. Mm -hmm. Now, you just said 50 issues. That's yeah. like half, but it's still a big number. Really big. Yeah. Yeah. A, a really big number for a run. Um, does it ever feel too big for you? Well, it, it was more than 50. 
Um, mm-hmm. There was a time where I kind of had uh, no pun intended to come to Jesus meeting with myself. It was just like, <laughs> okay, like, what is the like, realistically, what am I asking of my readers? And what am I asking of myself um, in, in, in creating this thing? Because, you know, I, which is why starting this year, we've started putting out more issues and doing more Kickstarters each year, because otherwise like the, the series, I was going to die or <laughs> the series is going to be done. And so, and, and honestly, you know, people traditionally, they don't, a lot of people don't really like stories that just seem to go on and on and on and on and on. And there's not a whole, I mean, some people like that, but it's just, I wanted, you know, uh, to, to trim the fat. And so it was probably originally, it could have easily reached a hundred issues. Um, but I, I really just kind of, sat down one day and and mapped out the whole series and and you know essentially each there are, so there are four books um so and and there's three volumes per book um so right now on my second volume of book one and and each you know th- that that's essentially how i'm how i'm pacing it each volume is four to six issues long so nice. um you know it's standard length each issue standard length you know 24 to 30 pages mm-hmm. and um, ma- I've mapped out enough of the story where I know, I know how it ends. Uh, I know, you know, pivotal, you know, pillars in the story that cannot be moved, that this is exactly what I want. Um, and I'm, I've left some room to have some fun along the way. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it really, it would have lasted a lot longer. So, um, so we're, we're trying to release, you know, about three or four, uh, well, trying to do about three or four Kickstarters a year, um, and I have other projects that I want to work on. I have other things I want to do. And the nebulizer was one of them. And so kind of the pattern that I've found is three to four Kickstarters a year. One will be a mini series that I'm working on and the rest of it will be Memoirs of an angel. And mm-hmm. that's essentially how I'm, how I'll be moving forward for now. Uh, that's great because um, I think it's so important for people to set goals, even if they seem really huge and I was even telling Nita not too long ago, it's like, we have a huge, huge goal with what we want to do, but pick a lane. Let's pick yeah. a lane. Let's do really well with it yeah. and see where it goes. And then from there, like once you get comfortable, you get acclimated to it. You, you get acclimated to the crazy, right? And then and you then, can do other things. Then you can do other things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because because honestly, like, you know, I'm a big picture guy and, and that's what Robin has is very you know she's an accountant she's very much in the details Mm -hmm. and i needed that perspective in my life to really and i still do all the time because i have all these big big picture dreams of where i want you know all the stories that i have in my head to go but if you try to tackle all of them at once it's all going to fall apart yes so you just you, you pick one thing do that learn to do it well and then reassess and move and just move forward like that and then that'll it takes a little time because trust me, I wish it could happen like that. That'd be great, but that's just not reality. Now. So um, picking, let's just say picking the lane in comics, the learning curve of comics, what was the hardest thing for you? (laughs) Because you do, you do the art, the art I would assume comes fairly easy, right? Uh, Now it kind of does. There's still days where like cars are in my script and it makes me mad. (laughs) Um, (laughs) but like you know there's i mean there are certain things that you know are easier to draw than others but um but yeah i mean for the most part the 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 art is probably the most time consuming the most challenging part um i i i have learned that i am a writer first Mm -hmm. um but i but you know my art is a very close second i you know i've always you know love to draw and design characters and things like that. So, um, yeah, I, I do, you know, doing, doing everything <laughs> originally that started out cause I was just too poor to pay anybody. <laughs> but, um, I feel uh, that. But, yeah. But so I was like, I guess I got to learn how to do this for better or worse. It's going to suck at first. And it did. It sucked at first. It absolutely did. You know, the, I think the most challenging thing that I've learned is lettering. Uh, but I feel like I've gotten decent at it. Uh, you know, I, I knew what, you know, the first, if you looked at the black and white issues of memoirs, you'll see that the struggle was real with, uh, with, with the lettering. Cause I had no clue. Uh, and then I just did some research and I learned and, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still picking up on, on, you know, because I, I would, I love manga. 
and I, American comics. And, and so like my comics I've learned, especially early on, like if you look at, you know, it, it doesn't, it, it, I tr- had trouble figuring out the, the left to right thing and how to, how to maneuver that. But, uh, but more recently I've, I've researched a little bit and a lot of comics now because of the blend with manga, it's now more a top first. So top down instead of left to right. And I was like, thank God, <laughs> because, it, you know, half the time, like I'm, I'm viewing the lettering process as an artist. And I'm like, this would look better phonetically within the, you know, the page. But then you kind of lose that left to right. But thankfully, that doesn't really matter as much anymore. So I'm happy about that. Yeah. Thankfully, I have Anita who goes, cut it. Or your tail looks like shit, Meredith. <laughs> oh editors that that's that's robin robin's like the visual editor of everything that i do mm-hmm. i'll call her in here and be like hey what do you, you know and of course i'm like look at this or or oh, you know, yes and you need that yeah. honest opinion and oh yeah they, and they will keep you and, humble oh and she comes she's very gracious about it. i really appreciate it. but she'll come in and i can just look at her face <laughs> And I know that it sucks. I was like, "All right, what's wrong?" <laughs> she'll, you know, she'll, she'll explain just hit it. Me. <laughs> yeah, it's like, just tell me what is it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's funny. Like I, I've, uh, I, I found a, a very similar in thinking. You know, just thought process of approaching art with mem- uh, with uh, with Mike Mignola, who uh, who <laughs> said it's like most of the stuff I do sucks. And I like a few things. And that's kind of how I feel about it, too. I was just like, I feel like most of the things that I do, like, I'm not like, it's not like a, you know, self-deprecation kind of thing. But it's just like, it, what I see in my head is not what ends up on the page as far as, you know, um, mm-hmm. as 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 good as, as I want it to be. But it, the general idea is there. Um, but, but, you know, most of the time it's either, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like calling Robin in the other room, like, ah, this is great. And she'll come in and, you know, make me humble. And, or, or I'm just like, this sucks. This is terrible. I need, I need to quit drawing. And she'll just be like, go take a shower and you'll be fine. <laughs> Cause that's, that's honestly the shower. Have is a the snicker bar. Place. Yeah, right. <laughs> the shower is the magical place for me. That's where I write. Um, most of all, all of my major dialogue. Um, so half the time I'm like jumping out of the shower, running to, to my computer to type some stuff down. Uh, mm-hmm. But that that's where I go when I need to just kind of recharge and, and, and I don't know, the creative juices begin to flow. So now uh, before we take a real quick uh, bump, um, you said that uh, a lot of the stuff or, or at the very beginning with memoirs of an angel, that it kind of sucks at first. Have you ever thought mm-hmm. about going back and redoing it? Well, I did that once. That was when, yeah, because so when I redid uh, everything and put it in color, um, yeah, I, I redid quite a bit of it. There were completely different page uh, layouts um, when when I redid it. And that's what, you know, and I was pretty pleased. There's a few pages that I'd still like to go back and maybe do a few tweaks to. But at the same time, like, it's, it is still, it's good in, in as far as, you know, industry standards. Like, it's good now. Uh, and, and I don't really want to just keep going back and and redoing it because I, I like to see the growth too. And a lot of people that I was talking to JD uh, Calder on the you know the other day, uh, he was talking about memoirs and just how um, you know as he's as he's seen from issue one to now the progress. And and I think that's cool. You know I, yeah. I think that's cool to see. So um, I like seeing that with other creators too. So like I said. Issue one is still good, but issue seven is a lot better. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I've learned as I've gone. Yeah. Now, because it's a because it's a story that kind of carries on. You have the same characters. Do you ever struggle with like the consistency, or you're like, no, nope, I'm I'm just going with this kind of newer look, more fluid look, maybe or polished, and things like that. Or do you try and kind of keep it? Again, you know, I think the struggle, especially with sequential art, is mm-hmm. consistency. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know that, you know, from what I've seen, I, I, I'll go back and I think this is really important is I'll go back and not only reread the whole series over and over again, just to make sure I'm, I'm not missing things or I'm staying consistent with the story, but also with the art. Um, and the only thing I can see the there's characters are getting subtly more crisp, you know, but they don't 
they're, they're not any, there aren't any drastic changes. Right. You, know, you the, can still kind of recognize the, yeah. 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 And I, I, yeah. Like it's not like a whole new artist took over on issue seven because I'm so much better than issue one. It's just, you know, it, things are just a little bit different, but it transitions slowly as you read, which I think that's going to happen, you know, in a lot of, a lot of, uh, projects a lot of you know as as an artist gets better i mean i think probably the but now this guy was already amazing but todd mcfarlane when he started spawn uh i mean you know you look at issue one it looks amazing but you look at the stuff he's done more recently and it's so much better um yeah so yeah all right well we are at the 30 minute mark almost bingo look at that so we're gonna do a little bump here uh for a 10 percent discount on your gemini mailers for those of you in comic books and you want to get your books delivered safely go to gemini mailers uh i'm, I'm sorry i think it's gemini comics supply uh for a 10 percent discount on your gemini mailers use coupon code vault 10 and that is courtesy of Indie Vault. Thank you, Varian Grand and Indie Vault for sharing that with us on Rage. And, and for those who are, of you who are tuning in, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We are live streaming simulcast to Geek Insider, Comics More New Jersey, Indie Vault, as well as Rage and AVC. Hit the button. Hit the subscribe button. And while you're there, check out the description because we've got the follow links for Brian Rodman as well. You can follow him on his socials. He's also got a YouTube channel that he's trying to grow we're going to talk about that in just a moment uh brian we're back all right so um yeah hit the button you guys hit the button do it do it trying to grow um and i am going to pull up the nebulizer in just oh, a okay. second but the dastardly dingoes podcast <laughs> it's not comic books no what is it what are you doing so uh <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing goes is a uh, ridiculous fun podcast about all things nerdy. And it's essentially me and my two friends, Jeremy and Chad uh, and us interviewing other creators, um, you know, reviewing movies and really just talking all things nerdy. Um, and uh, it's a blast. It's fun. We have a lot of fun on the show. Um, we don't try to take ourselves too seriously at all. And, uh, and that seems to work out for us so far. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's been great. We are in our third season now. We're about to start our fourth season here soon. We're actually having a meeting next week to talk about, you know, what we're going to do to change up the show a little bit. Uh, I think we're about to start doing live shows all the time mm -hmm. instead of every mm -hmm. now and then. Uh, Cause up till now it's been a pre-recorded show. Which has been great, but it's it's putting a lot. You know, Jeremy is our producer and uh, does all the editing, and that's a lot. Uh, yeah. That's a yeah. lot. He does it full time, and and so that's so it's going to give him a little bit of a break and help us. We want to do some. We're going to start now that the pandemic's over with. We're going to start doing some stuff in in the Dingo Cave. Uh, some some you know real time commentary uh, on movies and things like that, and so. Um, that stuff will be pre-recorded and that'll free Jeremy up to edit those things while we can just do the interview shows and stuff live. But, uh, but yeah, we, uh, we, we, we've started, we started doing it. Me and Jeremy and our, our friend, Justin, um, were, we did season one, all audio, uh, on podcast. And, and then when the pandemic hit, we, we really, you know, Justin, uh, you know, he just decided he'd really, really want to do it anymore. And so Jeremy and I, we were like, well, do we stop or do we keep going? And Jeremy really wanted to do uh, a YouTube channel. And so we're like, that's cool. That's fine. And so he and I changed or changed into an interview show because it was just essentially the nerd news and what we thought about it. And that was it. That was season one. And season two, we started getting on into indie creators, uh, you know, just chatting them up and much like this and mm -hmm. uh and through that we found you know i i had jeremy and i both knew chad separately um uh, we we all three live in louisville and um and when chad was on a few times we noticed there was pretty good chemistry there and uh and i give chad a lot of crap because he's one of the most talented if not the most talented indie creator in the business right now and i just need to keep him humble that's my job in his life is to make him feel like crap. The beard so, has spoken. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, we, we have a lot of fun with that on the show. Most of it is me talking about how much I hate Chad. 
and uh, and it is it is a lot of fun. A lot. If I can, the abuse. Yeah, if I can just rope people. Oh, he 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 comes right back. Uh, it's it's great. If I can get people um, who are the guests on the show to, to help me hate Chad, it's even better. Uh, which has happened a few times, and I love it. It's great. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's it's a ton of fun. It's if you want to, you know, uh, and and. This past week, actually, we had uh, my my editor for Memoirs of an Angel. Uh, he's a demonologist, and mm. uh, but he's not like crazy, <laughs> and uh, and so we he he walks through that um, that pro this that one was probably the most serious episode we've ever done, um, just because there were some real questions that come along with that topic. Where you're like, what? And uh, <laughs> and but he he did such a great job, you know, kind of answering the the skeptical questions and things like that, and. And it's a great episode. But other than that, most of the time it's lighthearted and fun and, and we get stupid. So yeah. now, so three going into three seasons, that uh, that takes a bit of commitment too. Did mm -hmm. you ever stop and go, how did this happen? Like what? <laughs> All what? the time. <laughs> All the time. I'm just like, good grief. Like half my <laughs> week is just like all of my week is taken up by something uh, you know, some kind of creative endeavor that I've, that I've decided to say yes to. Um, <laughs> uh, and then of course on that, on top of that, I, I'm now on a, a rising tide show as well. The comic book spectrum on Thursday nights, mm -hmm. um, with Brian K Morris and, um, and, uh, Clyde Hall and Eric Hawkins. And we just review indie comics and talk indie comics and it's a lot of fun or review comics, not just indie comics. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it's, you know, everywhere I turn, I'm either working on a comic or talking about them. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, though. I, I love it. I love it so much. I don't ever get tired of it. And I can honestly say that. That's awesome. Yeah, um, yeah I'm starting my own uh, comic journey. I started this past year. And it's like, oh, my gosh. I am never, ever, ever going to get off this learning curve. And I'm oh, halfway yeah. to dead. You know? <laughs> I mean, seriously. I, I but realistically, I'm like, uh, uh, why did I start this when I was 49? Because I think if I was 20, I would have failed. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I'm I'm really kind of glad that I'm doing it now as opposed mm -hmm. to then because I have more patience now. Oh, yeah. um, I know what my limitations are, um, and I, and I also, in a way, I kind of know what I want. Yeah. Have you have you found that also in in your creative journey? It's like the oh. older you are now, you're kind of more settled. You're you're, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, had I, I mean, had I started this in my, you know, I mean, I started in my late twenties. I think I was like 20, oh, 28, 29 when I started. But, but you know, yeah. Now I now especially with you know all juggling all the all the different projects and things i couldn't have done that in my 20s i wasn't i wasn't mature enough to do it in my 20s i wasn't wise enough to do it in my 20s i'm barely wise enough to do it now <laughs> and, uh, to handle it now and so it's just you know it, there comes a you know there comes a, a a a place where in your life you get you gain more and more discernment on on what to say yes to and what to say no to and 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 when you're young you usually don't have that yet mm -hmm. um and uh and honestly you approach life different uh as, as you get older and and so and, and hey you know what meredith don't feel bad because my asthma is just i'm my, with my asthma the way it is i'm probably halfway to dead too so so uh, <laughs> <laughs> so there we go we're one step closer <laughs> Every day. <laughs> oh, and now we're like, another step closer. There we go. Right. Yes. There, I mean, if there's one guaranteed thing, okay, we don't make it out alive. Right. And you know, hey, hey, bring on the sweet release. You know what right. I mean? Let's, let's go. Oh, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to bring up the nebulizer while we're talking about that. There <laughs> we go. You've got five days to go. Yep. 98 backers, so close to 100. Let's get him to 100 backers, yes. you guys. I mean, that's a huge goal right there. A chronic asthmatic and his feisty AI controlled nebulizer suit fight through a post apocalyptic world filled with allergen mutants. Oh, my. <laughs> uh, can we play your video? Yeah, go for it. Sweet. Yeah, the, uh, the video, just really quick, it was made by Jeremy Woodring. Who's the main producer and uh, of the Dashley Dingoes, and he is a fantastic. fantastic and there it is, you see it on the screen, the nebulizer. It ain't easy being wheezy. All right, here we go. Hey, everybody. 
everybody. I am Brian Rodman, and I create comics. You may have uh, seen my previous series, Memoirs of an Angel, or you may have seen me on uh, the Daxter Ludingos podcast on YouTube. And if you haven't, then you should go to brianrodman.com and check those out because they're pretty stinking awesome. But today, uh, I'm here to talk to you about a brand new series, a post-apocalyptic action comedy called The Nebulizer. So The Nebulizer is about a chronic asthmatic uh, who's named Connor and his feisty AI nebulizer suit uh, named Alby as they fight through a post-apocalyptic world filled with allergen mutants. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And it knows it's ridiculous and you're gonna love it because it's ridiculous. Uh, and the best part about this, honestly, for me, is that this comic is for everybody. Uh, all ages uh, will enjoy this. I mean, the worst thing in this comic is monster guts. And let's be honest, what kid doesn't like monster guts, right? You know? Uh, Brad, I, I don't think all kids like monster guts. There are kids that don't like monster guts? Yeah. yeah. What? I, I don't know. This comic is for everybody. So before the blast, because there's a there has to be blasts. It's post apocalyptic, right? Um, so Connor's doctor created a vial um, that really stores all of his medication that he can put inside of his suit. And the catch is, it only lasts for three years, and this vial keeps him alive. So him and Albie are on the hunt for this last remaining vial that hopefully is out there somewhere. It's Bubble Boy meets Mad Max with a dash of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and I Am Legend. So it's a lot of fun. And this project means quite a bit to me personally because I have chronic asthma and I have had that my whole life. So when I was growing up and even now, um, when I can't go outside, I can't do things with my friends, I'm in front of a comic book or a TV uh, watching cartoons or movies and I'm drawing. Really, it's because of asthma that I became a comic creator to begin with. And I really wanted to create a character that asthmatics... Uh, young and old can identify with and look to and be like, hey, that's really cool. That's a great representation of asthma and asthmatics in the comic book world. So this project in particular provides a lot of really cool ways to jump into the world of the Nebulizer. Uh, we'll of course have digital and physical reward tiers for the issue itself. Uh, we'll also have an amazing variant cover by Seth the Moose, whose uh, art is featured in stories like Floppy Cop and Tales of Mystery. Uh, for the higher tiers, we'll have prints and bookmarks, but we'll also have a really cool tier where you yourself will be able to be drawn as an allergen mutant. Who doesn't want that, right? And we also may or may not have some really cool surprises along the way. So scroll through, see what reward tier fits you best, and jump right into the world of the Nebulizer. Thanks so much for watching. So much fun. And the yeah. artwork is, the artwork is fun. Yeah. It's funny, the, the artwork, um, it's inspired by, like, the original uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles toys and, like, the He-Man toys. So, like, kind of that short, stocky, um, um, you know, model. Uh, yeah, it's just really that, you know, the bright colors and the, the overly dramatic, cartoony look, um, that's just fun. So you said that you had a story about the nebulizer, like how it came <laughs> to be. I right. must hear it. <laughs> okay. So I brought up the tech shop that I work in. Uh, you know, that's my nine to five and I love the guys that I work with. Uh, we're all really good friends and uh, they're all huge nerds as well. And <laughs> so they have a game though, that they play where whoever makes me laugh so hard that I have an asthma attack, they win the game. Ryan, <laughs> you do not play games that try to kill you. That is not cool. It's not. So, um, so we don't play it every day. You're not but... your friend. We don't play it every day. <laughs> friends don't kill friends. No, they, they, uh, they, it's not an intentional game, but uh, we, we, we say that it is just because it's, it, it is actually, I, I've, we all have really bad dark sense of humor so mm -hmm. you know it, it is pretty funny that half the time it, it, it's become a game but um but anyway one day one of my co-workers won and um i was taking you know and brian I was, I was, was in the hospital no <laughs> <I'm> kidding. <laughs> and uh and 
and I was, you know, on my, my nebulizer and we, we, you know, we were all talking about at that point, like what we just need to make you a suit um, that that's just a nebulizer. That's just constantly pumping, you know, medicine in you. And that way you don't have to worry about this. And, uh, and from that, you know, we all laughed and, and I drew like a goofy picture of, uh, of, you know, me in a nebulizer suit and passed it around and they were all like, actually, that's really freaking cool. Uh, so then I drew a more serious one and posted it on Facebook and that's what, you know, uh, the nebulizer ended up looking like and everybody loved it. Everyone was like, Oh my gosh, when's the story going to come out? I was like, I don't have one. So <laughs> like, I, guess oh, I, better, crap. I guess I better draw. <laughs> I guess I better create some kind of story. And then throughout, um, at the beginning of the pandemic, you know, with, uh, with my asthma, I was, you know, really high risk. And my doctor was just like, stay at home and don't go anywhere. And, um, and I did. And, and through that, it kind of became writing the nebulizer kind of became therapy for me. Uh, mm -hmm. So I actually surprisingly came up with a really touching, fun, it, ridiculous story um, that that really it, it'll make you laugh, but it's also going to tug at your heartstrings. Um, so it's uh, and, it, and it's all about, you know, I mean, the, the, the premise is the allergen mutants thing. It's the thing that has the things that have like tried to kill me my whole life. Now I can kill them back in this comic book. Um, and anybody who has asthma and, and allergies can, can, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a, a release in that way. Um, but you know, with that, it's just, it's stupid. Like it's so ridiculous. It's so much fun and it knows it's ridiculous. Um, but at the same time, there are moments where it switches from being funny and ridiculous to being, you know, sad, uh, heartwarming. Mm -hmm. I mean, cause ultimately it's, it's not just about, you know, it's not just about having, um, you know, representation for asthmatics and comics. It's also about, you know, family. It's about family that you choose versus family that, that, you know, you're stuck with. And, um, and, you know, it's about, um, what defines, uh, suffering and, 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 and kind of how to, how to walk in, uh, your trials that you have mm -hmm. no choice to, but to walk in and, and how you deal with that and how you approach that in life. Uh, and, and so it deals with these heavy things, but in a humorous, fun way. I think that's how we learn best is mm -hmm. that if we can relate to it, if we can laugh about it, if we can cry about it, just any kind of emotion that comes yeah. from it and it helps us grow. I think it's uh, it's pretty amazing because as storytellers, it's a lot of people don't want to. Uh, take on the responsibility, but there is a certain amount of responsibility, especially when you have a story like that, you yeah. know, to kind of stay true to it and, and let people have that therapeutic moment because of your experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Like right now I'm actually, I'm in the middle of the issue or I'm a little past the middle of the issue um, drawing just kind of a really, you know, sad part of the story. Uh, Cause we, we, we not only, are following Connor, who's the guy inside the suit. Um, but we, we go back and kind of see, you know, what, what childhood was like for him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and a lot of that is, you know, some, some personal, uh, feelings that, you know, I, I really didn't address until I wrote this book. Um, right. so, um, so yeah, there's, there's some moments in here where, you know, you're probably going to either feel at the very least feel sorry for this character, but at, at the, at the most relate to him on some really deep ways and, maybe shed some tears but then we jump right back into stupidity <laughs> so you know and, and i see like the the art styling even the video a little bit is a throwback to like 80s maybe early 90s you know i yeah. see the water cannon in there i'm just like oh yeah oh yeah you know man. it throws back to uh, to like fun days uh mm -hmm. for some reason i see i see the nebulizer suit and i think of stretch man i don't know why <laughs> is That's that weird funny. No, not at all. It, it, I think a lot of it has to do. I really wanted to capture the early '90s, uh, just in the color palette, like I said, and even in like the 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 you know kind of how I draw the characters as well. But uh, I just I really wanted that feel, even though it's not set in the '90s. You know, it's not a period mm -hmm. piece or anything. It's just right. that when I think back to fun, you know, nostalgic times, uh, th this is what pops up. So I really wanted to just throw that in there too. And I think anybody, you know, uh, who who you know, grew up or, or, you know, was alive during that time would really enjoy that as well. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and we're scrolling through. So anybody who's just listening in, listening in, but get my tongue back here. Um, there is a way to catch up with Memoirs of an Angel. Yeah. And you've got some swag there. You got the beanie. You are at this point in time two backers away from unlocking the nebulizer beanie, which would be cool. Yeah. Uh, I love this logo. I mean, just <laughs> the colors, the pop, and it was just I remember the first time I looked at it, I was just like, what was it? I for whatever reason it didn't click. And then yeah. I had those oh moments. I'm like, oh, this is brilliant. And yeah. oh, I, I need that like a pin or or something. Oh yeah, we've got we've got uh well we we actually just here I have it right here. We got them in the mail. Ooh, There's hold on stickers. a second. Let me let me get you on the big screen. Sure. Yeah, got so stickers. Got stickers. Those, are the, those are the labels stickers. that are gonna go on to the uh the collector's boxes, but I think uh we're probably gonna go ahead and order some anyway just to stick in Ooh. to a physical reward tier. But oh and while we're while we're here. This currently is. I was going to ask about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is pretty cool. I do want to show off uh, just the packaging because Damien uh, Walbrin at O Toys did such a fantastic job making this. This is my favorite part: is the package Ooh. opens. You don't have to damage the package to take nice. him out, and uh, each each toy comes with a nice sticker as well. Very cool. Now, what was the decision to go with that? Because that is not um, that is not usually a very cheap endeavor. No, uh, it's it's not usually. And uh, and Damien and I have been friends for a long time, and uh, and he just started. He, he's worked with a couple other indie creators and and done a toy line, a toy line for them. He he's really good at it. He, he, right now, he's his his model is more of the the Kenner, you know, the old Kenner Star Wars toys. It's kind of that. It's that model, and um, and he's done that with a few other projects. And he approached me um, about doing one for the Nebulizer, and then potentially uh, down the road doing memoirs of an angel figures as well. And oh, very uh, cool. and you know, uh, we talked about you know more of the practical you know pricing, what that looked like versus you know kind of how would we uh, you know. S- you know, really presented on the Kickstarter campaign. And, and uh, yeah, we, Damien, if you're an indie creator, Damien's very reasonable and, and super talented. I mean, each, each figure is going to be hand painted. Um, the, the, the packaging is super professional. Um, and, and he's, he's a great, great, great guy to work with. I think that is uh, pretty awesome because there are a lot of people who are looking at the the different modeling options, you know, whether mm-hmm. it's action figures, whether it is um, um, 3D printing and things like that, and trying to find, uh, find something that'll hook um, the audience into into something more it's it's yeah. just that tactile besides flipping through the comic book and things yeah. um, to and and highly collectible. You only had five oh, yeah. in this. Uh... Yeah, well, there were ten actually. Yeah, oh, okay. Ten, ten figures, and uh, and we sold. We eight people grabbed the figure on day one, and then we mm-hmm. kind of sat for a few for a couple weeks uh, with two figures left, and then this past week, um, two people snatched them up. Uh, ironically, they're both doctors. <laughs> and, um, so. Uh, <laughs> So that that's actually another fun thing is you know I've I told my doctor about this idea last well two years ago now, and um, and he he as a you know as a as a lung specialist is super excited that you know that that there's a character now out there that's that that kids can read and 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 relate to and it's it's all about you know what it's like to have asthma it's all about that and, and it's in it but it doesn't yeah but it's not like a oh i'm a victim it's no it's just you know the, he owns it and he goes out and kills the thing that that uh that, that could kill him and and it's a lot of fun and um and you know before that i mean when i was a kid i had oh gosh there was a video game that we played at the doctor's office called bronchi the bronchiosaurus mm-hmm. and it was essentially a little dinosaur that was like a mario game but you know it was like certain things like certain allergens you'd run across and it would hurt you. And it, you know, it's like, that's other than, other than this, that's like the only other thing uh, that, that I remember that it was any kind of like asthma focused. Um, and so now people, 
uh, of all ages can enjoy the story and uh, and and have some fun with it. That's awesome. Uh, I, and it is so much fun. I, I just love the approach that you have uh, as a way of kind of having those serious moments, but keeping it fun, keeping it educational without bonking you on the head. Yeah. And I think maybe that's a testament to, you know, your, your past. Oh, you absolutely. Know? Yeah. You know, growing up in it, you know, I mean, I know, uh, you know, as a kid, you know, I knew a lot more about um, <laughs> medical stuff than, than half of, you know, most adults do. And, and that's just because, Hey, I, I had to know that stuff. And, and now I can use this knowledge to, uh, to share with people, but you know, in a story similar to memoirs of an angel, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's sharing this world, sharing this part of my life uh, through a story. And, and, uh, and, but this one, this was the big thing with memoirs. Things are very serious. And, and I also have to, you know, stick with uh, uh, world building rules that, you know, I didn't create really, you know, there, there's some creative license I can have within that, but, but I'm really trying to stick with more of a biblical worldview here. I can do whatever I want to do. Sure. You know, I can absolutely have fun with it. I can, you know, I can do literally whatever I want to do in this world. And, and it's uh, got monster guts. And it's got monster guts. Who doesn't like monster guts? I right? love monster guts. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. I asked some of my friends, I used to, you know, the slime that used to get out of the quarter yes. machines and stuff like that. Yes. I used to slime the lockers and stuff. Oh, it was bad. <laughs> it was bad. Monster guts is where it's at, you guys. And Absolutely. so is the nebulizer number one. We've got a couple more minutes left with you, Brian. Uh, this hour went by really fast. So five more days to go. We're trying to get to at least 100. Let's smash through that. Uh, make sure that you share this out with your friends. Uh, share out the campaign. If you are watching on the YouTube channel, we are simulcasting to Geek Insider, Comics of Morning Jersey, uh, Indie Vault, as well as Rage and EVC. Hit the like, subscribe to those. If you check out the show notes, you're going to see his YouTube channel as well for the Dastardly Dingoes. And uh, let's, let's all network and grow together. Brian... Where can people find you? I mean, I know that I already posted the links, but for the people who are just listening in, okay, and, and right. maybe not paying attention so much, pay attention, you guys, and hit the button. Yeah. Um, uh, but actually, the easiest place to, to find me and everything that I do is at brianrodman.com. Uh, it's essentially its own uh, link tree. Uh, at the very top of the homepage, there's my Patreon, there's the Kickstarter link, there's all my social media stuff. Um, and we have an online store there as well. Uh, mm -hmm. If you want to get caught up on Memoirs of an Angel, if any of that sounded super awesome to you, hit, uh, you know, we have all the books available uh, right now. So, yeah. And uh, the Nebulizer, of course, is on Kickstarter for five more days. And uh, two more backers. I want that beanie. Selfishly, I, I just want that beanie. Like, that's all I want out of this campaign. I made this whole campaign just because I wanted a beanie. <laughs> now, now with, the, with all the social media and stuff, where are you most active? Where can people kind of interact with you? The best? Facebook's the best place to interact with me. Uh, mm -hmm. Instagram as well. That's those. I'm on Twitter, but I like to stay off Twitter. It's kind of a dumpster fire. So, um, so yeah, Facebook and Instagram are the, are the big two. That's awesome. Uh, Brian, it has been a pleasure. We are at our hour. Let me just put your card up here. All right. For everybody who is tuning in, this is episode 19 of Raging with the bearded one, Brian Rodman. He's got Memoirs of an Angel. He's got the Dastardly Dingoes podcast. He's got the Nebulizer number one. It ain't easy being wheezy. Make sure that you check it out. Um, head over there. Hit the share button if you cannot uh, pledge to that's okay. Hit the button. It's that easy. On that note, you guys, it has been a pleasure. This is Rajan. Hey, Nita. You. Final words. Throw the dudes. You're right. We're out of here. <laughs>